so good morning my dear students <clears throat> so as you know that probably today evening you are going to attempt the first english test okay uh, so don't worry about the notes that i haven't taken yet because i have not circulated it yet because uh, i'm just waiting once if you are back to the college or something probably i can make you to write or maybe i can supply you the photocopies okay but right now i have just completed the first chapter so your textbook itself is notes okay read the chapter very clearly understand each and everything and attempt the test today evening from 7 to 8 as you all know okay so i have already discussed uh, the question paper pattern and at 7 o'clock sharp probably you will have the question paper available online go through read it and then answer it okay so don't get panicked okay so whatever that you have studied whatever the answers that you can make whatever that you have thought in your mind from the textbook that is more than enough so first you attempt this test let us see how it works so once you are back to the college or something i'll see what best i can do in terms of providing you the notes or something okay so as of now don't bother about notes that have been not been provided or so or something okay just look into the text have the textbook ready with you or have the textbook uh, uh, preparation ready for with you and then at 7 o'clock probably you can attempt the test okay so don't get panicked and take it very easily but do it effectively that's what i would like to say okay so after telling you all these things today is my class number 8 and today let us discuss the second unit that you have from the text reflections that is your literature book it is actually a poem okay the title of the poem is the school boy and william blake the poet who has written this poem okay William Blake is not a new name to you maybe you might have heard or read some of his poems that were written by the same poet in your earlier classes okay so today let us discuss one of the poems that he has written that is prescribed for your studies that is the school boy i'll come back to the title and at the later point right now let us know who william blake is and what uh, let us know something more about the poet so please turn on to page number 13 in your textbooks you have been given a note on the poet william blake 1957 to 1827 poet and painter was born in sohio the son of a hosier he had little formal education but was apprenticed to james basire an eminent engraver and then sent to, to the royal academy his finest work as an artist in the series inventions of the book of job his collections of poetry include poetical sketches in the year 1783 songs of innocence 1789 marriage of heaven and hell 1970 and songs of experience in the year 19 I'm sorry 1794 the school boy is a lyric from the songs of experience okay this is what all you have that is william blake not only poet but also as a painter was born in the city called sohio where the he was a son of a hosier okay so find out what is the meaning of the word hosier and let me know in the next class or whenever so just try to find out make the note of this word h o s i e r find out the meaning keep it ready with you who is a hosier okay now he was a person who born to a man who was a hosier by profession it is something related to the profession He had a very little formal education and then he was apprenticed to James Basire an eminent engraver and then sent to Royal Academy so he was probably with a very young uh, age or something he was apprenticed apprenticed he was kept under working under a engraver by name James Basire an eminent engraver you know who's engraving like you know it could be on stones or anything like that okay so he was under him as an apprentice apprentice a person one who takes training okay so apprentice 
on and then he was sent later on to the royal academy maybe to the school or something and then his finest works of an artist in the in series are inventions to the book of job that is the first book that he wrote or uh, as an artist was inventions to the book of job so this is something that he wrote and then later on he became a very eminent poet in the england okay and at the same time he has written so many different poems in such a way that he was also called as the nature poet william blake was actually a poet who was almost living on the same time like you know william wordsworth okay so william wordsworth is a very familiar name in the similar way even william blake was also a poet who has written enough number of poems which are critically acclaimed by both critics as well as the people okay so this name is also a very familiar name in the history of english literature and some of his works have been given in the text just look into it his collections of the poetry include poetical sketches which was published in the year 1783 and then he was known for two collections of his books called as songs of innocence and songs of experience so both are there given in the text that is songs of innocence was published in the year 1789 and then he also wrote a collection of book which is called as marriage of heaven and hell which was published or which was written in the year 1790 and songs of experience 19 i'm sorry 1794 okay so these are some of his major works in the collection of the poems which he he has written nevertheless what you need to understand is that william blake a nature poet at the same time has written two important or has written so many important poems or new innumerable innumerable poems in english which are well acclaimed by the people who have read it his two important works in his life includes songs of innocence and songs of experience now why am i stressing this point is that the poem that is prescribed the school boy is a lyric a song that he has written under songs of experience okay so it's clearly given there the school boy is a lyric lyric song or a poem uh, from the songs of experience okay then when we say something about william blake just remember that he is also a nature poet and the school boy is one such poem written by him under the title the songs of experience songs of innocence songs of experience remember that or just remember the name of the poet or so all right so having said that now let me come to uh, the pre reading activity of the poem and what does it say the pre reading activity so when you open or when you come to uh, page number 11 you have been given the title with the name of the poet and you have a pre reading question and on the other hand you have a picture and straight away the poem starts okay so before we could go read the poem and understand and discuss let us see what do you mean by or what has been given in the form of pre reading activity so that i can set the context for studying the school boy okay now recall your school days what memories do you have of them share your experience with others school boy school days so the pre reading activity will definitely ask you to go back to your school days so remember some of your experiences which even today you remember when you were in the school okay i'm sure one or the other thing you will definitely have it in your mind so that you can just share it now why the pre reading activity is given on to go back to your school days is that the title of the poem is the school boy okay now if i have to tell you more about the title of the poem the school boy so here william blake is going to talk to us about a boy the school boy that is why it is been given in a definite article the school boy and he definitely is going to tell us here about 
uh, experiences of one particular boy it could be the poet himself or someone else or whatsoever let us see it in the context of the poem okay so just look into the picture and analyze the things what you can think of or how exactly will you review once you look at this picture okay so there is a window two boys are playing maybe one is a classroom or maybe a library or whatsoever and then there is one cage in which there is one bird is inside it and then on the other hand there are birds who have the freedom no this is just my analyzation okay you can also look into this picture and give your own kinds of analyzations or how exactly do you look into it the moment you look into this picture or something okay so having said all these things let us start reading before reading the poem or something i'll just at a stretch i will read it once okay you can follow me and then probably we will just start discussing the poem I love to rise in a summer morn when the birds sing on every tree the distant huntsman winds his horn and the skylark sings with me oh what sweet company but to go to school on a summer morn oh it drives all joy away under a cruel eye outworn a little ones spend the day in sighing as the well and dismay ah Then at times I drooping sit and spend many an anxious hour nor in my book can I take delight nor sit in learning's bower worn through with the dreary shower how can the bird that is born for joy sit in a cage and sing how can a child when fears annoy but droops his tender wing and forget his youth's full spring O oh, father and mother if buds are nipped and blossoms blown away and if the tender plants are stripped of their joy in a springing day by sorrow and cares dismay how shall the summer arise in joy or the summer's fruits appear or how shall we gather what griefs destroy or bless the mellowing year when the blasts of winter appear okay i have just read it at a stretch okay even you can have your own way of reading the poem once and uh, let us go back to the title of the poem before analyzing or discussing the school boy okay so here whenever you are reading a poem or a prose or an essay or whatsoever there are different types of the narrations that a author or a poet or a dramatist use isn't it in the similar way when you look into the very first line of the poem it starts with i love to rise in a summer morn so whom do you think i is i here in the poem can be the speaker all right or it is the poet himself william blake himself understood so i is an example for the first person narrative technique used by a poet or a short story writer or a playwright or a dramatist or an author getting i wherever you find i it is nothing but it is the person who has written whether it could be a poet a dramatist an artist or maybe a playwright or an author for that matter okay so that is why let us be very very specific here that the speaker in the poem is nothing but the poet himself you can regard him as nothing but william blake himself okay so shall we discuss the poem now okay now the very first stanza we see that the speaker or the poet is asking us about his choices or he is telling us about what exactly would he like to do he says i love to rise in a summer morn that is i would like to wake up early in the summer morning when the birds sing on every tree why do i like to rise early in the morning morn is nothing but the short form for the word morning okay so i love to rise in the summer morning when the birds sing on every tree 
because I love to watch or hear the birds chirping or the birds singing sitting on different trees. The distant huntsman the distance that is a person one who is very far away from me who is supposed to be a hunter who is supposed to be a hunter winds his horn winds makes blows okay winds here is you have to understand it as he blows the horn that he has with him and the skylark sings with me oh what sweet company so what do you understand in the very first paragraph i'm sorry the stanza don't ever say paragraph this is not a prose so it is a stanza so in the very first stanza what we see here is nothing but the poet's perception of how a summer morning will be okay so usually the poet tells that he loves to wake up early in the morning that too on a summer morning when the birds sing on every tree okay he is a person one who could hear the songs that is the chirping or the songs sung by the birds sitting on the different trees the distant huntsman that is a person one who is about to go for hunting or something he also makes noise in the form of blowing the horn blowing the horn and the skylark skylark name of a bird okay so the skylark also sings with me the skylark also sings with me and all of us together sing oh what a sweet company we do have can you look into the exclamatory marks that have been used in the first stanza last line oh what sweet company so they are explaining exclaiming something what is it we will see it in the first, second stanza so am i clear with the first stanza so in the first stanza there is a presence of the uh, poet himself so he himself starts saying that what does he love to do on a summer morning because he loves to hear the songs sung by the birds not only that he is also interested in the horn that is been blown by the huntsman or a hunter who is very very far off from me or who is away from me and then uh, the skylark also starts singing with the poet and both of them or all of them start exclaiming that oh we are really a very good company to each other getting so this is what you got to understand with the first stanza description given by william blake on the title the school boy okay so being in a school boy or something william blake was used to get up early in every summer morning because he wanted to hear the birds singing at the same time he was also fascinated by a horn that was blown by the hunters before they could go out at the same time he uh, what can i say uh, he also remembers a skylark which also sings along with the poet and they exclaim to each other saying that yes we do have a very good company so this is the gist of the first stanza of the poem all right okay hope you are following me let us come on to the second stanza but to go to school on a summer morning but where do we use this word but huh when you are in doubt isn't it when you are in a dilemma but okay so the very second stanza of the poem is started with a but word and he says that but to do go to school on a summer morning oh it drives all joy away so what do you need to understand here is that when william blake is telling that i love to wake up early in the morning but to hear to the songs of the birds but not to go to the school that is what he says now we are coming back to the title of the poem here right so oh but to go to school on a summer morn oh it drives all joy away even just the thinking of going to school early in the summer morning takes away all my joy i become sad that is he says that he becomes sad 
under a cruel eye outworn so i don't want to sit under a cruel eye why what happens in a school you go to school you have your teachers isn't it so he says that i do not want to go to school because it will take all my joy because i am very much attracted towards nature i am very much attracted towards the birds or the nature rather i would not like to go to the school because it will take my all joy away from me i'll become very sad if i go to school under a cruel eye out one under a cruel eye is nothing but maybe a reference to the teachers who are there in the school the little ones spend the day in sighing and in dismay according to the poet the little children who go to school that is the little ones who go to school to spend all the day 9 to 5 is indian time right so you should be in a college or in a school from 9 to 5 or something so he william blake is of the opinion that i do not want to go to school because it will take all my joy away i do not want to sit under a very cruel eye who would hit me or who would yell at me who would scare me off or something and i also know the fact that all the children should go to school and they go and they spend the whole day there but what do they do they just go and sigh and they are very dismay they are just going to become sigh and they just become very fearful dismay something like you know surprise okay sighful sighing why are they sighing they are helpless they have to go they have to go that's it okay so they are giving a sigh a kind of a thing that they are not really very happy being in the school and they are also very fearful why i have told you the reason am i clear with the second stanza the second stanza is exactly opposite to what we discussed in the first stanza there isn't it here the speaker or the poet comes back to his own personal life and he says that he doesn't want to go to school because it will take all his joy away he doesn't want to sit under a cruel lie who would be watching him and he is of the opinion that all the children who will spend their day in a school they are just sighing or they are just very fearful or something okay so these are the second stand this is the second stanza of the poem now let us come to the third one here ah then at times i drooping sit ah at times that is when i go to school what do i do is that i go and i sit with my drooping shoulders what do you mean by drooping something very bending like thing isn't it so drooping sit and spend many an anxious hour i keep on spending my time sitting in the school because i am forced by my parents to go to the school or something so once i am back in the school what do i do is that i am very anxious to go out but this cannot not happen and that's the reason that i sit with a drooping shoulders or sit and spend many an anxious hour nor in my book can i take delight nor sit in learning's bower which through with the dreary shower according to me i do not want to sit in the class or i do not want to sit in a classroom because it doesn't give me any happiness look at it what does he say he says nor in my book can i take delight that is even if i open the book to take down something or to read something i am not happy okay then nor sit in learning's bower i do not want to sit myself in the classroom where others are interested but me no i am not interested in the class worn through with the dreary shower dreary shower worn through with the dreary shower that is the instructions given in the classroom by a teacher are something which are dreary shower i do not want to listen to anything that my teacher or my uh, uh, lecturers or whoever tells me that is any kind of rules and regulations i just don't want to listen to them that is what he says in the third stanza of the poem then how can the bird that is born for joy okay now he immediately riff, li- you know shifts into a narrative technique of his own personal self and then he starts asking this question that is how can the bird that is born for joy 
how that the bird which is born for the joy sit in a cage and sing so now the poet is comparing to himself to a bird okay he is comparing himself to a bird he is making use of the personification here what is the personification you know it right so one of the figure speech figure of speech is in english that usually poets make use of in comparing the things right okay so how can the bird that is born for joy sit in a cage and sing he is asking a question to himself like you know a bird is nothing but he is exactly compared to a small child or a child one who doesn't want to go to school isn't it okay now how can the bird that is born for joy sit in a cage and then start singing no it cannot do so isn't it how can a child when fears annoy fears of going to the school annoy annoy surprises him but droop his tender wing i cannot carry the bag with the drooping shoulders and go to a place where i don't enjoy or where i don't want to go to but droop his tender uh, wing and forget his youthful spring my parents force me to go to school they give me a heavy bag or something i have to carry it on my shoulders and i have to go to school but i am not at all interested in going to a school and i do not want to waste my youthful spring that is spring is a reference to the time here okay when i am young i want to play when i am young i need freedom when i am young i don't want to be in the crutches of the school or something that's what he says in this okay clear four stanzas i have done so far let us have the last two discussions and i'll wind up this session oh father and mother if buds are nipped buds who are the buds here comparison to the children so if you are forcefully nipping us that is dipping inside the water that is asking us or forcing us to go to the school 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 always and blossoms are blown away our happiness is gone that is our happiness is gone and if the tender plants are stripped we are compared to the very tender plants that is the school going children are compared to the tender very light plants if you start stripping us now of our joy in the springing day by sorrows and cares dismay that is whatever the care that you take it will definitely act as a sorrow on us that is the poet is saying that he is requesting the father and the mother that young children are something which cannot be dipped in water by or forcing them to go to the school and they are very tender they are very tender plants so you cannot strip them but still if you keep on stripping or forcing them then of their joy in a springing day by sorrow and cares dismay so the poet is of the opinion that he is asking the parents not to force the children if they aren't interested in going to the school or something by uh, taking away their childhood memories isn't it the school boy now school boy is making all these kinds of the observations and requests that is springing day by sorrows and cares dismay and then the last stanza he discusses and says how shall the summer arise in joy or the summer's fruits appear or how shall we gather what griefs destroy or bless the mellowing year when the blasts of winter appear so in the last stanza he keeps on comparing to the four different seasons that we have which means that life is nothing but a cycle it keeps on moving and moving and moving right so he is of the opinion that is the poet is of the opinion that how shall the summer arise in joy if you keep on sending us or asking us only to go to the school or something okay then how can be the summer that we should be able to arise or make in a joy or the summer's fruits appear okay or shall we gather what griefs destroy that is if you are going to the school it is always a kind of a grief that is always mellowing on us that is if you keep on asking us to go to the school every now and then if you keep on forcing us then how can we be the very tender children able to 
take the benefits or are able to take the enjoyment that we get from the nature so dear students remember that i told you about william blake that he was also considered or called as a nature poet isn't it so that's the reason that this poem is on account of william blake himself who is trying to tell us about the spring or the winter or any other reason for the season for that matter how the summer's fruits appear or how shall we gather what griefs destroy or bless the mellowing year that is being children we need to enjoy our childhood and if you want to enjoy our childhood children should be given enough freedom by the parents that is what he tries to say or bless with the mellowing year when the blasts of winter appear blasts nothing but the change in the circle or the change in the season is something that is referred to as the blast what happens usually in the winter especially in a country like england isn't it so people are so thrashed by the so oh, very cold wave that arises there isn't it so in the very last stanza of the poem the poet compares his childhood to the life cycle of the four or the three seasons that we have and it keeps on rotating from summer to winter or to rain or whatsoever in the similar way the poet is requesting that he doesn't want to waste or he doesn't want to uh, what can i say he doesn't want to uh, annihilate something that is called as the childhood by making him or some children or any children for that matter uh, to uh, forcing by their parents to go to the school instead they are interested in enjoying the nature looking for birds singing uh, you know listening to the sing songs of the birds and in turn playing outside and in turn talking to the nature or in turn being blissful being very happy to the nature in terms of getting a freedom rather than a cruel i who is a cruel i here in the poem probably the school isn't it it could be the school here so that is why the poet is telling us that as the season changes even the people will also change accordingly so right now at the tender age a freedom should be given to the children that is what he says and he winds up the poem by saying that when the blasts of winter appear when the blasts of winter appear it means that probably it is another season that has arisen and they that is the children would definitely look for the freedom from their parents rather than forcing them to go to the school or college okay look into the glossary there and i'll wind up okay so there are some words that have been given here you try to read it understand and then once again connotates to what i have discussed with the description of the poem so huntsman nothing but hunter so uh, uh, where did we find this word we found it in the second or a third line of the poem in the very first stanza where the poet or the speaker of the poem is very much interested in a huntsman from a distant place blows the horn i am interested in listening to that isn't it winds his horn blowing his horn then a cruel eye out one authoritating ways of teaching as i told you it could be your teacher it could be authoritative headmis headmaster principal whomever you can take it off into okay dismay if you are using it as a noun it is nothing but a feeling of fear or discouragement then anxious hover restlessness of the boy that is they are very anxious in the school because they do not want to take down anything rather they are interested outside the world then learning bower metaphor for school who is the learning bower here nothing but the school the place where you just go start learning for something then dreary shower here it emphasizes the tiresome aspects of the school dreary shower that is they keep on asking you to write listen and all those stuff so that's what blasts of winter strong gusts of winter that is snowstorms as i told you england is a place where there is a lot of cold during the winter so in the similar way that has been given there so i stop this here and i shall discuss the question and answers in my next class if you have any doubts or something 
प्लीज मेक ए नोट ऑफ इट और सो और रीड द पोएम वंस अगेन विथ द ग्लॉसरी एंड ट्राई टू अंडरस्टैंड इट वंस अगेन और यू कैन वंस अगेन री वॉच दिस वीडियो इन ऑर्डर टू हैव ए प्रॉपर अंडरस्टैंडिंग ऑफ द पोएम सो विद दिस आई वाइंड अप दिस सेशन दैट इज द स्कूल बॉय बाय विलियम ब्लेक सो हियर देर इज एन एक्सपीरियंस ऑफ द पोएट हिमसेल्फ और द स्पीकर हिमसेल्फ अबाउट वॉट डज ही वॉन्ट टू डू इन हिज चाइल्डहुड एंड वाई डज ही वॉन्ट्स टू डू ऑल दोज थिंग्स ऑल राइट सो थैंक यू वेरी मच आई शेल मीट यू इन द नेक्स्ट क्लास विद द डिस्कशन ऑफ द क्वेश्चन एंड आंसर्स रिलेटेड टू द पोएम थैंक यू